Sampling and fire assays are crucial steps in the gold prospecting and mining process, especially for small operations seeking to confirm the profitability of potential claims. The aim is to assess the presence, concentration, and distribution of gold in the soil, sediment, and rock at a prospecting site. Accurate sampling and assay results provide essential data that help small miners decide if a claim holds enough economic potential to justify further investment in mining operations. Sampling for gold and fire assays involves several types of professionals, field geologists and prospectors, experienced in collecting samples from specific geological features, such as alluvial deposits, veins, and ore zones. They understand the geological markers that often accompany gold deposits. Mining engineers and technicians, typically involved in setting up sampling programs that optimize accuracy and cost-effectiveness. Laboratory assayers, highly trained professionals who perform the fire assay process, often in a certified laboratory. They ensure that assay results meet industry standards for accuracy. For small-scale miners, the process may begin with fieldwork conducted by the prospector or miner who collects samples before sending them to a third-party lab for fire assay testing. Sampling and fire assays are typically conducted at various stages of the prospecting and mining process, exploration stage. Before any major investment, initial sampling is performed to determine if gold is present in economically viable concentrations. Pre-feasibility stage. Once initial signs are positive, more systematic sampling and fire assays are conducted to map out deposit distribution and estimate potential yields. Ongoing operation. Some small operations may continue limited sampling and assays to monitor productivity and adapt mining plans as gold concentrations fluctuate. For small-scale miners, assays are crucial during the exploration and pre-feasibility stages, as they determine if the claim holds enough gold to justify an operational investment. The sampling process is location-specific, depending on the geological context of the gold deposit. Primary deposits, hard rock, often found in quartz veins or other host rock formations. Sampling targets areas where gold-bearing rock shows promising characteristics, such as visible gold or sulfide mineralization. Secondary deposits, placer deposits, located in riverbeds, streambeds, benches, and dry washes, where water has concentrated gold over time. Sampling is generally done along gravel bars, bends, and other areas where heavy minerals tend to settle. For small-scale operations in locations like the Little Harquahala Mountains in Arizona, sampling is often focused on areas where historical records or geological indicators suggest the likelihood of gold deposits. Why conduct sampling and fire assays? The main goal is to determine if a particular piece of land or claim has enough gold to make mining profitable. For small operators, understanding the economics behind their claim is critical, as they often work with limited budgets. Sampling and fire assays provide the following advantages. Economic viability assessment. Accurate sampling and assays help miners understand potential returns, reducing the financial risk of developing unproductive claims. Mine planning assay data allows small operations to strategically plan the mining process, ensuring they extract gold from high yield areas first to increase early profitability, reducing overhead costs. By focusing on high grade ore, operators can reduce processing costs, which is especially beneficial in small operations with limited processing capabilities. Sampling methods and best practices. Small-scale operations typically use these sampling methods to maximize accuracy. Rock chip sampling, common in hard rock mining, where samples are taken from visible veins or ore bodies. This is often a quick and inexpensive method for early assessment. Bulk sampling involves collecting larger quantities of material, particularly useful in placer deposits, to get a reliable estimate of gold distribution. Channel sampling, used to measure continuous sections of ore bodies, which provides insight into gold distribution across a specific area. For accuracy, samples should be collected from multiple locations within the claim area, and the sampling should be representative of the geological variations present. Fire assay process explained. 
The fire assay is the industry standard method for gold testing because of its precision in measuring even minute concentrations of gold in a sample. Here's a breakdown of the fire assay process. Step 1. Sample preparation. The collected samples are crushed and ground into a fine powder. This step ensures that the gold within the rock or sediment is uniformly accessible, enhancing the accuracy of the assay results. Step 2. Fusion. The powdered sample is mixed with flux, a combination of lead oxide, silica, and other chemicals, which helps to separate the metals from other materials. This mixture is then placed in a furnace at temperatures over 1,000 degrees Celsius, where the flux melts and combines with the metals in the sample, creating a lead button at the bottom of the crucible. Step 3. Cupellation. The lead button is placed in a cupel, a small porous container, and heated again. The lead oxidizes and is absorbed by the cupel, leaving behind a tiny bead containing gold and any silver that might be present. Step 4. Weighing and analysis. The resulting bead is weighed to determine the amount of gold. In some cases, the bead undergoes further refining, such as parting, which is separating gold from silver using nitric acid for precise measurement. This process, though time-consuming, provides results with exceptional accuracy, which is essential for small operations where every fraction of an ounce counts. So, understanding and interpreting assay results is, well, pretty crucial. The results from fire assays are often expressed in parts per million or ppm, and sometimes in ounces per ton, or opt. Small operators use these measurements to estimate the gold grade of their claim and, you know, predict profitability. For instance, high-grade deposits are generally considered profitable if they yield 0.1 ounces per ton or more in hard rock or 0.015 ounces per ton in placer deposits. On the other hand, low-grade deposits typically yield less than these amounts but can still be profitable with efficient processing. Using assay data, small miners can calculate the potential yield and decide if their findings justify investment in further exploration or full-scale mining. Profitability hinges on several factors, which small operators must carefully consider. Processing costs. Small miners often have limited budgets, so it's essential to keep costs low. On-site processing with portable trommels or high bankers can minimize costs if the grade supports it. Claim maintenance. To legally mine a claim, operators must file proper paperwork with the Bureau of Land Management and maintain annual fees to keep their claim active. Failing to maintain these can result in losing the claim. Environmental compliance regulations are strict about minimizing environmental impact. Compliance with these rules, such as avoiding contamination of water sources, is critical and helps avoid fines that could impact profitability. Local market prices. Gold prices fluctuate, so miners should keep an eye on the market to understand how the price of gold may affect their return on investment. A successful small-scale mining operation typically uses a range of equipment suited to the location and type of gold deposit. Metal detector ideal for initial sampling, especially in placer deposits where surface gold might be found. Portable sluice box or high banker allows operators to process more material efficiently at the claim site. Crusher and mill essential for processing hard rock material in small operations. They reduce the ore into manageable sizes for further testing. Hand tools such as shovels, picks, and pans are inexpensive yet necessary, especially for sampling and placer deposits. Dredge or dry washer, suitable for placer gold recovery, especially in dry regions where water is limited such as Arizona. Safety equipment, small miners should always carry first aid kits, GPS devices, satellite phones, and plenty of water to ensure safety in remote areas. Systematic sampling ensures a comprehensive understanding of the deposit's grade. Prospective miners should follow a grid system or sampling pattern to cover the entire claim area. Documentation, maintain detailed records of each sample's location, depth, and geological characteristics. This data is invaluable for planning mining operations and substantiating claim assessments. Environmental precautions. Following environmental guidelines helps protect natural resources and maintain compliance with local regulations, which is essential for keeping claims active and avoiding fines. Continuous learning. Small miners should stay informed about new techniques, equipment, and market trends. 
Gold prospecting is as much about skill as it is about luck, and knowledge can often tip the balance toward success. For small operators, the sampling and fire assay process is a foundational step that defines the potential profitability of a mining venture. Thorough sampling, methodical analysis, and accurate interpretation of assay results provide the data necessary to make informed business decisions. With a well-prepared claim, documented findings, and a clear understanding of local regulations, small miners like Billy and Guyen can turn small claims into profitable operations. Whether working the dry washes of Arizona or any other potential gold hotspot, success in small-scale gold mining depends on careful planning, patience, and a respect for both the land and the legacy of prospecting.